Good morning, everyone. I was just curious to know, when uh, coffee moaning starts, do you ever have it on, like, standby, waiting for the sound to come? And then suddenly it lands. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Hashtag, hashtag, F of Friday. Morning camera two. Um, oh, what's that? Um, morning, morning, Joni. You know, I know what I know that you know, that you know that I know that you know that what I know. Joni, there we go. Um, morning, Faith. God, I've missed you. 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 I've literally uh, been down a hole. Uh, oh, look, what, what, does, what does YouTube say? Uh, what did you say, YouTube? Uh, I have opened in a tab sometimes, and then forget, join a conference call, then Mark and Adia's voices start playing in the background. So stupid. <laughs> just, just saying stupid shit. Um, hope you're well, guys. Missed you. I haven't had a chance to watch, but I... Lovely Lily. What a lovely Lily Lily is. Um, you're going to be seeing more of Lily. You're going to be seeing a lot more of Lily as he goes on an odyssey. And if it's not just an odyssey, it's going to be a journey. And if it's a journey, it ain't going to be a journey in one direction. It's going to be a journey in another. Anyway. It was so nice to see that he, he joined in. Um, I heard, so, oh, apologies, Nadia would, would tear me, have my guts for garters, because I haven't had a shave. I, was, I got in at stupid o'clock, haven't had a chance yet to do me ablutions and all that kind of stuff. Saab Turbo's cold. So what have we got to do? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna say? What are we gonna do? Tell me about tell me what you've been up to. Tell me, hello. <sighs> <laughs> That's Gigi having a chat. It's been good. It's been hard. It's been hard. We've been shooting a film, but it's been incredibly hard, incredibly long hours, um, but incredibly worth it. Um, and we are doing another day on Sunday, and then we have one other day, and then theoretically everything will be shot. Gabrielle, how's your mental health, Mark? Um, it's been better. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord, if anyone really ever, ever chooses to think that making a film of any level or scale isn't difficult. <laughs> I tell you what, making a 365 days a year documentary series is infinitely easier than creating a, a fictional film. Put it that way. Um, Teresa Hutchinson, not seen you since I went to Japan. I got engaged in Japan on October the 9th in Tokyo. Fantastic. And can we also say, before I forget, because my brain is a sieve. My brain is a sieve. It's been holding in it, and there'll be a number of people here who know exactly how much it's been holding in it, in terms of shop lists, schedules, da -da 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 -da. Um, it's a sieve. Stuff is slipping out, stuff is falling away. I'm not responding to things in quite the right way because my brain is made of goo. But I just want to say a happy birthday to dear, dear Leah. Tori, happy birthday. You are not only a happy birthday to Leah, but you're a staggeringly brilliant mum too. So congratulations. Um, and we know what that means, 10 years. We know what that means. Edward Bevington, brain fog hitting us all. Mr. Cardinal, I hear Michelle Williams is great. Michelle Williams, yeah, why are we talking about her? Um, I love it when you cross chat and it makes no sense. Suddenly you say something like, I don't know, cheeseburger. And it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Uh, Richard Kavanagh, good morning. I hope you're all well. I hope you're well too, Richard. I love the way you, I don't know how you do that, but you sort of highlight something and suddenly ping, it kind of bumps into your eye bubbles. Hi, jo Joni. Hi, Tori. All right. I hope you're all right, sweetie. Um, masks, Jennifer Mann. Masks. Uh, I might have to knock you out. Have I lost sync? Because I just had a missed phone call. Have I lost sync? Have I lost sync? Sometimes that happens when I get a call. I just had a call, just had to kill it. Am I all right? Sure? Cool. Um, brill, brill, brill. Well, look, it's been a... You're okay on audio? Okay on audio? Okay, okay on sync? Um, a bit out of I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna re, I'm just gonna reboot. Just one sec. Just one sec. Wait. Cambo, welcome as a family guest, Cambo. I liked your comments. I, I was seeing a few of your comments before, uh, well, before Monday. 
Uh, yeah, cool. Nice to have you on board, matey Flip. I'd sing your name. Cambo, Cambo, Cambo. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Is that better? Thank you. Did I see Reese got there? Reesey, Reesey, Reese, Reese. Coffee, coffee, coffee. Ba-doom, ba-doom, ba-doom. Um, so lovely to be back, Julie Hilton. Uh, old Julie, and I'm glad you are too. Oh, there's just so many people. Oh, just big hugs. Just big hugs, big hugs, big hugs. You were all there with me in spirit yesterday. Kimru Valkyria. Is that the sort of Welsh Valkyrie? Hi all. Hello. Okay. Oh. Why is that? Why, why, have I gone blurry? Have I gone blurry now? Oh my God, I'm looking at my screen and it looks like I've gone blurry. I've gone blurry. Have I gone blurry? Oh no, I'm fine. What's going on with my computer? Okay, enough of this dicking about, guys. So we're gonna have the Friday quiz right at the end. Um, I've just been looking at the, uh, I mean, I know everyone's like, oh, for God's sake, we're not talking about it. We're not gonna talk about it for long, but I mean, I think we have a huge luxury to be able to choose not to talk about it. Um, uh, and it's obviously, I, I, you know, it's been curious actually, having been sort of um, hemmed in and ensconced and, and literally we were shooting so much of what we were shooting was called Day for Night. Um, Joni, tell you all of explain. And, and so quite literally, we have been filming throughout the day for night. So we've been in a four day night time set, essentially. Very strange, it's a very strange experience. So I feel like I've not seen daylight, quite literally. Um, not, not yet, Kerry. Uh, what, I would, what I would suggest is, it's, what, what I can say it's about is coercive control. Yeah, um, that's it though. Um, uh, yeah, so it was weird. And then we had this moment, and all I want to say is just, we, I was working with someone who's called Nova, and I love that, light, Nova, supernova. And we called him supernova because he brought light. Anyway, then we had one final scene where there's extreme daylight. And then when it was night time, last night, it was daylight. It was daylight. It was so bizarre because, I mean, you know, it's not giving too much away. No, 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 no. And then we have a... Wow, it's daylight. Anyway, so um, why am I saying all that? So, yes, yeah, so it, quite literally being sort of sealed and hermetically removed, actually, from all of the horrors, from all of the horrors of the world and certainly of, a, of the crisis that's happening in the Middle East. Um, I'm just going to... Is it, it's looking really bad on my screen. Let me, let, let, let me just sort this. Sorry, this is really annoying. Let me, let me, let me just try and sort, sort this. My quality is super awful. Let me do that. Um, is that better? Oh, that's better. Now you can fully, and now I can fully see my own whiskers, which is hideous. Um, so, Tony, what do you think? When do you think? <sighs> Bloody hell. Got another, the biggest, in a weird way, the biggest shoot day is towards the end of November. But um, you'll get, you'll, obviously you'll get a, Come in on the edit, come in on the edit. Um, what was I gonna say? So yeah, so yeah, so being removed, being removed from the Israeli uh, Gazan crisis, just for a minute, I thought, you know what? What might happen here is we'll come out and, and, and the world may, might have gained some kind of perspective and humanity and sense but what do we discover as I'm literally, and I, I've been up since about seven going through the news, I'm staggered. What do you think I'm staggered by around the Israeli Gazan crisis? What might I be staggered by? I, I am absolutely staggered and depressed and frustrated. Linda Lovell, it's worse. Alison, uh, Alison Barber, lack of humanity. Me too, which is worse, war or hell. War, innocents don't go to hell. Only sinners go to hell. Poor guy, Mash. Uh, clear as day, but a uh, clear as day bias, spider belong. But spider belong, tell me which way do you think the bias goes? Because the main, I've never, ever, you know, and we've often sort of like, I'm not for a minute, sort of steering towards conspiracy theories, because I worry that, you know, I've always, you've always, I've always been circumspect and I've always acknowledged that our press leans heavily to the right, you know, right wing. That's fine. If you know it, then you can kind of treat it with circumspection and kind of hold it at arm's length. 
and go somewhere else to kind of seek a little bit of balance. Not an awful lot, but a little bit. Oh my God. The mainstream media is, I think, right now at its most vulnerable because, and this, is, this isn't taking sides, relating to the fact that the news that comes through the mainstream made media is A, in many ways, so undetailed and so uninformative, B, is like watching play school sometimes, C, when it's agenderized, which is often to the right, it's so blindingly obvious, you wonder how can anyone swallow this garbage? And where are we? D, E, F, D, E, F. And then when you're in a situation like this where even the Labour Party have signed up to the mainstream narrative, you think, you th have we gone mad? This isn't about, you know, what, what's happened here is, and it just struck me as absolutely petrifying. Yeah, look, even the once respected Radio 4 becoming victim to short form interviews. This is becoming petrifying. What you're listening to, and I just heard it, I mean, obviously I was heard the radio heading in at the crack dawn, I heard the radio late at night. What you're hearing is the mainstream media, not, the, not social media, on either side actually there, um, but we're hearing there's the mainstream media trying to railroad everyone into one narrative choice. Now, I'm not suggesting that you can't have the opinion that the mainstream narrative is trying to drive us towards, but you've got to be allowed to have more than one. I, I, I'm literally staggered. I've just seen some other Muppet from the front bench of the Labour Party. Who is it? Steve Bell. Some other Muppet only willing to use one-line headlines, which if you're keeping everything to a headline, they've just, what they've decided in the Labour Party is, we've got to say one line because we, people can only cope with one thought, which is for, if, in first instance is patronising as hell. But that first thought has to be what is going to be the most likely and the most popular and the least what... So Israel has a right to self-defence. No one is asking, what does self-defence actually mean and look like? What is self-defence to different people at different times? What is self-defence to different cultures? Prior to, and I'll say it one more time, prior to the appalling attacks by Hamas, appalling attacks, appalling attacks, prior to Hamas, a vast, vast, vast number of impoverished Palestinians would have argued, not in terms of what Hamas did, but in voting maybe for Hamas, that they too were partaking in self-defense. Now, I'm not talking about whether you agree with that or don't agree with that. I'm not talking about whether there are countless little gradations of stuff to debate. But I can't believe how the mainstream media is telling us to have one opinion and is threatening to... Um, make illegitimate the ability to have any other opinion and then thereby conflate it with the, one of the most heinous things. This, this is the thing that gets me so wrong. There is no connection between humanity, having humanity and being anti-Semitic. I don't understand this horrendously dangerous, corrosive, destructive pairing that if you're critical of Israel, you are, you are somehow anti-Semitic. It's an insult to Jewish people. Sorry, I just say, I, the thing is, I genuinely came out thinking there'll be a ceasefire, there'll be some kind of cessation of hostilities. There would be more than 12 trucks let in. <laughs> Are we having a laugh? Um, satellite studies show that Israel has increased its bombardment of southern Gaza which is where they've told everyone to go to. So what's happened? They've said to everyone in Northern Gaza, evacuate to the south. Hamas will have moved with them. So they're now bombing the south. This is the most inhumane, and this isn't self-defense. This is not self-defense. People could say, well, these are, you know, it happened. I mean, when you start getting into the, 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 the argument of it, it happened in Dresden, a stain on humanity. It happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. 
a stain again. I mean, how, are we, how have we got to a point where we look to history to find occasions where mass civilian casualty was a byproduct of something as a means of justifying the murder of innocent civilians today? Are we in some kind of fucking insanity? This is fucking insane. In, and the Labour Party, Keir fucking Starmer, I hope he loses all of his fucking advantage. I don't, I don't expect anything different from the Conservatives. This is an absolute stain and shame on any human that this is being argued for as self-defence now. There was room for a response. There was room for a response. We are three weeks, nearly four weeks down the line. It's unforgivable. I'm listening to the radio. Nick Ferrari is saying that innocent people killed in Dresden. He, he's citing, he's, I couldn't believe it, that yesterday morning or last night, whenever it was, citing the most extreme examples of civilian casualties as a means of justifying the killing of people in Palestine. What? What? I, I literally can't believe it. I literally can't believe it. We have hit an inhumanity I didn't think was even possible. I think even someone like Trump would look at this and go, hang on, the rubric's gone a bit weird here. But if you say that, the mainstream media will have you think you're saying what Hamas did was right. What? How does that connection happen? No, because as many people, a lot of you, a lot of people on social media, a lot of people outside the mainstream media have been saying the mainstream media has an agenda, and and it fucking does. It fu sorry, I'm it, staggered, staggered. Why isn't anyone talking about Islamophobia? Staggering, a staggering lack of intellect, an ability to discuss, an ability to argue, a lack of humanity, compassion, negotiation, using a civilized head. Hamas didn't use it then, and Israel haven't used it for many years before, and Hamas haven't used it many times before either. This isn't about sides. We are literally just, there's this Arab journalist, this Arab journalist, I could not believe what I was seeing. This Arab journalist, what's his name? Wael Dadu, works for Al Jazeera. You say if someone works for Al Jazeera, everyone goes, ah, anti-Israel. Check out their reporting. Because they state it how it is, the mainstream mess would have you think they are only supporting one side. That's propaganda, that's brainwashing, it's control. It's out fucking rageous. Israel, Israel, not the Jewish people of Israel, Israel, are the, they have the self-appointed right to say that the UN is wrong. What? It's like being with the most passive aggressive narcissist in the world. This is Israel. Everything you do to us is your fault. Everything we do to you is your fault. Out fucking rageous. And no doubt YouTube, because we're being, trying to bring balance, will be like, oh, oh. Why isn't anyone, oh, about while Daudu's wife and children who've been killed, this journalist reporting on his nation, killed, he buries them both, or goes to their funeral, takes them to their funeral, and the next day, he is reporting again. Go to Sean King. Don't listen to this bollocks about people trying to marginalize Sean King. Fuck that shit. Mainstream media wanting to rubbish him, wanting to rubbish any dissenting voice. And what is a dissenting voice in this? A dissenting voice is someone saying, look at humanity on both sides and shared equally. 
It's a fucking outrage. We are an embarrassment. And Labour... You see, the thing about the Conservatives is, and this is really, this is really shocking, they don't, they don't try and hide what they are. But Labour do. I hope this fucking destroys Labour's advantage. I really do. Keir Starmer tiptoeing around this bollocks. What an absolute scumbag. Sorry, absolute scumbag. Have some bollocks. A right to self-defence is not carpet bombing and killing 500 people every day, the majority of them children. If you've got an enemy embedded in there, you have to, I'm afraid, work with the world and find a different solution. You don't just bomb. It's not the way you do it. Okay, let's try and think of an example. With the Irish problem, let's go to Belfast, when the IRA and the Palestinian, uh, and the uh, Protestant Catholic IRA, okay, would the British government have bombed all of Belfast in order to get the IRA cells out? Total, it's to a total parallel comparison. Someone answer me that. Would that have been a strategy anyone would have signed up to? Would it? Would it? I mean, honestly, if you presented that to the world, okay, we've got, we've got terrorist cells in Belfast. We did. They're bombing in the mainland. They did. They killed horrendous, horrendous acts of terrorism. Do we carpet bomb Belfast? It's ma this. Genocidal Germany was one of the, the biggest, if not the biggest stain on humanity. And what we're doing here in a very, very manipulative fashion is twisting, bending and shifting the narrative so we can justify something and call it something else. I was, I, four days, absolutely no progress. But what's actually happened is it falls down the news agenda because they're just going to bid in. The reason they're not going in in a big way is so that everyone shuts up. Sorry, it's not, and you know what? I don't give a fuck if anyone disagrees with the idea that we should say this and we should think of both sides. There's enough people banging on about one side. If you're a poor Arab civilian right now, you're at the bottom of the pile. Right at the bottom of the pile. That's Islamophobia. Fuck it. Fucking, it's a fucking joke. Sorry, I'm so sorry. It makes me so cross. And, you know, Nadia's parents, they've headed out there. I mean, you know, Nadia's dad isn't even, is, isn't Muslim. He's a Christian, he's an Arab Christian. He's devastated watching this because there's such a clear message being sent. You know, people in the UK, people in the Cotswolds will be thinking, oh, Arabs, it's sheikhs, they've got oil, they've got this, they've got that. They live like this, they don't watch, all this racist bollocks. They don't think for a minute that they're actually ordinary civilian Arabs who actually care, have humanity, want to live in peace. No, Islamophobia. This characterization of anyone who opposes Israel is somehow like ISIS, absolute bollocks. And as I say, there are, and this is the point, we won't hear from the thousands of Israeli Jewish civilian citizens who likewise think this is the most appalling stain on their country's foreign policy. This isn't an, an this is a humanity thing. Queen of Jordan didn't denounce Hamas. So fucking what? Why should, so what? So what if she didn't? What are we saying? I do. I denounce the fact that they did what they did. Of course it's appalling. Whoever's upset that she didn't denounce Hamas, why isn't anyone denouncing Israeli occupation? That's why she didn't denounce Hamas. She's not saying what Hamas did was right. But what double standards? Unless you denounce Hamas, we can't listen to you.
Go over to Israel and ask them to denounce all of their army officers that have tortured and imprisoned and shot the legs out from children for fun. It happens. It's sport for I, some IDF members to shoot the legs out from children. Did you know that? No, we don't know that because no one wants to report that. It doesn't suit the narrative. So yeah, maybe she should have mentioned, maybe she should have denounced, but we can't use that as an argument to not be critical of Israel. This is, this is, this, this is like sitting in a room with a nasty narcissist. Oh, oh, you haven't said this. You can always home in on something that hasn't been said. You can always home in on something that someone hasn't said that or they haven't done this. Or that. Oh, there's always someone or something. And I will just, I'll always sit behind that because it's easy. Because you just want the more narrative. Fuck it. It's, 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 it's just an absolute outrage. It's a stain on everyone. And I, I would say watch Sean King, watch Al Jazeera, read the Daily Telegraph, read the Times, get some balance. This poor guy. And he's just one of, he's just one of thousands. But you know what? People will be like, oh, he's an Al Jazeera journalist. He's probably friends with Hamas. This is what people say. He's probably friends with Hamas. Oh, come on. Come on. And most, look, the weird thing is, there's so many people in the West thinking they're doing the right thing, going, Israel this, is Israel... The vast majority of people in Israel can't fucking stand Netanyahu. I want to know the answer to this question. If Egypt warned him this was going to happen, why didn't he do something about it? The most sophisticated Mossad intelligence service in the Middle East, the most sophisticated... Uh, um, military, he was told by Egypt, an Arab nation that was working to keep peace in the area, he was told. Why, isn't, why are no journalists asking that question? Why? Why not? Because it doesn't suit the fucking narrative. Dig into who controls these papers, dig into their interests, it's all connected. But for me, I don't even have a problem with the fact that we have a mainstream right-wing press. It's when the Labour Party weekly just goes, oh, let's go for whatever, let's tickle the tummy of whatever the current situation is. Mossad didn't miss this. Are we, are we were born yesterday? Here's, a, here's, a, here's, a, here's another detail I haven't shared on here either. One of the other details about the awfulness, the awfulness, the unforgivable savagery and awfulness of the Hamas attack. There appeared to be a reduced military presence and, it's, and it, interestingly, it hit a festival where the vast majority of the attendees were sympathetic to the challenges faced by the Palestinians, i.e. they will have been peace-loving, free-loving Israelis, probably critical, actually, of the Israeli government. Probably. Don't know for sure, obviously, but probably. It just strikes me as curious that on this day, with a warning, at a peace protest of people who were probably anti-Netanyahu, that they couldn't, the most sophisticated military, they're hitting Syrian airports, they're hitting Lebanon, they're hitting... What, they didn't see a couple of men with a digger coming through? Are you having a laugh? Are you having a laugh? No one will sort Who's asking? If you ask this question, you must support Hamas. What? It's a joke. Debate. It's a joke. It's an absolute joke. Those, you know, the poor families of those hostages. What's happening to those hostages as they just keep bombing? I mean, it, this is, it, are, are the families of the hostages actually sitting there going, oh, great, you know, car, oh. Hang gliders, thank you for reminding me, Edward, Edward Bevington, hang gliders and a digger. They've got an iron, are you having, really? They, and they, 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 they what, overwhelmed a gate? These are the kind of questions some journalists should be asking. These are the kind of questions. Which doesn't mean you support the fact that they did what they did. Not at all. 
But we are now in a competition between Israel trying to show, what Israel is trying to do is, is a separate to the awfulness of what people have gone through. There's a competition between what's worse that's happening to which children. And children are equal. Children are not identified by a conflict artificially created actually by the West. Six hours, good point, for the Israeli Defence Force to respond when they can scramble jets in seconds. Why is no one asking this stuff? The fog of war. The Labour Party are so batshit scared of saying anything anti-Israel because of all of the stuff around Jeremy Corbyn and the perception that their party is anti-Semitic. We had a prime minister who described Muslim women as looking like letterboxes and no one says that the Conservative Party is institutionally Islamophobic. Where is the balance? So what a shocker. What a shocker in another week that people, we're, we're still in the self-defense mode. You know, for me on that self-defense mode thing, there, you know, let's park all of these other questions aside. Everyone, and we made a really big point in that first week of saying everyone has a right to be hurt, to, be, to respond, to bite back. If you've been hurt, you have a right to bite back at that moment. But self-defense over three to four weeks, is, that's not self-defense anymore. That's not self-defense. It's not. And trying to suggest that a rocket here or a rocket there that's, that's still coming over is, is self, it's not comparable. I'm sorry, it's just not comparable. What a disappointment. Get to the back of the class. What, what an absolute yeah, spider balloon. What a shame on them all. Sorry. I mean, I lost my shit, but you know what? No one, no one expressed. It's just breathlessly frustrating. As I was scrolling through the news looking for something, thinking, God, are we, is this the best our journalists can offer us? Because they're actually controlled by all of their, their you know, all of their channels. Anyway, um, <laughs> a couple of other things I was going to talk about. It seems a little bit trite afterwards. Uh, dad bod or six pack? What do you prefer, guys? It's Friday. Let's have a moment of, of brevity. Sorry. Um, um, what do we think? Body, uh, dad board or six pack? Which do we prefer? Um, this is a piece about the fact that uh, Kim Kardashian is launching skims for men. Oh, look, here we go. Should we do a poll? Because I'm on here. Let's do a poll. Let's do a poll. Oh, I've lost you. Oh. This is being very, very annoying on this computer today. Maybe it's because it's been. Uh, are you a dad board or are you a. Look, you're coming up there. Obviously, dad. Why is that? Why do you prefer a dad bod to a six pack that you can run your fingers down and it sounds like a washboard? Why is that? Dad bod, but not be a big beer pack. Sorry, Samantha B. You see, in this piece, so that, you know, maybe I should try some skims. But I mean, skims for men. Why? She's used six pack men, I think, advertise it. But surely, isn't the idea with skims that it contains a body that for the person whose body it is, not that it does look wrong at all, they want to make it look tighter? Isn't that the idea of skims? Isn't that what they do? So she's launching a new shapewear brand for men. Uh, it's uh, skims, I think, yeah, she's got an ad campaign featuring several smoking hot athletes, all displaying their uh, package at our skimwear for penises. I see. So this is like vacuum packed clothing to show off your knob basically, is that what it is? Um, reminded me a little of the... So, what do you think? You see, I think as a man, you don't want a big belly. I mean, I don't think anyone wants a big belly, do they? But it's about whether if you have one or if you can't help but have one, um, not being judged and not being body shamed and not being thought that that belly surmises who you are or what you are and, it, you know, is what makes you attractive. So, you know... I, I do a lot of exercise, and so I don't want to look. I want to look nice, I, I, I don't really do I do, do I do it for myself? I kind of do it, I, I, no, I don't actually. It's like, it's like why I stay sober. Um, I do it for, for nads, I do it because maybe it's nicer, it must be nicer for her, I think, and all that kind of stuff. But, but 
the person who wrote this article sort of says, no, I much prefer a man with a, with a sort of, you know, a dad bod, which is a little bit undefined. Do you think partners prefer that in each other because it then takes the pressure off them needing to look, not that they do, or not that the pressure's real? But is there an inadvertent pressure if one of you is more, say, toned and ripped for the other one to go, oh God, but if he feels like that and that's important to him, then maybe it should be important to me. Do you know what I mean? What do you think? Is that what it's about? I literally can't make this. My computer's chat is not working, which is really, really annoying. Let me just move this over. I'm just gonna do this. Imagine undressing and all that skims. Up. Well, the thing I don't understand about skims is, isn't there always a kind of hallelujah moment where you take this sort of, what do you call it? I mean, there's lots of other brands, isn't there? There's all sorts of clothes that kind of keep stuff in. But isn't there that moment in the bedroom where say you, 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 you take them all off, they fire across the room and like shrapnel, they sort of hit the window, take out an ornament, because let's face it, we all have ornaments still, don't we? Um, and, uh, and then suddenly all is revealed. And it's not that it's horrible, but you've, you've sold yourself a con. It's that thing, isn't it? Who are you cheating? You're ultimately cheating yourself. You're letting yourself down. It's like when I was young, I mean, it's not like this at all, but I just wanted to share. I used to keep my sock on on my right foot because I was worried that anyone, out, a girlfriend I had would see my bad toner. But then of course, at some point you have to take your right sock off. I mean, in any relationship. Uh, good God, who's that? Christopher Cundall? Matey Flip? That is ludicrously generous, overboard, yet it's naughty. That's naughty. I'm going to drop you a line because that, but that's very kind. It's very kind. A whole host of you are going to be unexpectedly turned into members, courtesy of Father Christmas here, Christopher Cundall. Oh, mate, 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 mate. That is incredibly sweet of you. Jesus. Um, do you know what I mean? Do you, does anyone else get that about the sock? I mean, I am blurry, am I? Hang on one second. Let me just, let me just do that. This 4G, 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 4G. Is it back? Are we back? Nothing's moving. Nothing's moving. Mark is defo with Sky. No, not Sky Broadband. It's bloody beta. Are we back? Back? Is it in vision? Am I blurred? Oh, you're all flying up. You're back. Okay. You're back. Loud and clear. Clear. Jack, Jack, Tom Knowles, Jack, Jack, kind of. Back, sharp, back, but blurry and buffering. Oh, I think we've obviously got some kind of uh, a thing going on here. I guess he's back, back again. Paint your toenail, <laughs> paint your toenail. Um, let me just try and do this. Uh, 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 uh. It's, yeah, all of our BT, Virgin, we're trying all blurry and out of sync too. Sorry. Uh, Virgin's definitely, oh yeah, Virgin's gone. Virgin's gone. Gone again. Angered the internet gods. It's mainstream media trying to get us back. Is that all right? Good, good, good. Oh yeah, that's better. All right, guys. So, well, yeah, so, yeah, I, I, anyway, the question I want to answer on, is the main problem for people, re -bod dad body, is it a reminder for the person who doesn't feel they're, they're perhaps perfected best that the, their partner may be, may be not happy about something? Do you think it might be that? Yeah. Um, I think it might be. I think it might be. Yeah, I think so, too. Anyway, thanks again, Christopher. I hope you didn't get that, that very generous moment there from Christopher Gundle. I didn't get lost in all of that nonsense. Um, it's like filters. I hate filters, says Cambo. Absolutely. Um, I like being, being strong. My body looks stereotypically good, but that's kind of just incidental. Yeah, I mean, I do think looking strong and having a, feeling like you've got a nice body can just be for yourself. Um, but I think it can put pressure on a relationship, right? I can see that. And I think that might be why, maybe that's why baked in again is that sort of, toxic self-body image that women predominantly are put under pressure over, but now more and more men are, where, you know, because the attainability is so ridiculously difficult and unachievable, that to like a, a dad bod means that you're kind of, you're settling for something, not settling for something less, but it, it means that you're not having to deal with 
sadness as much. I don't know. I don't know. Men in skims reminds me of Solaris. It feels better to be fit. Yeah, it's not about how you look. It's about fitness, isn't it? Yeah. I don't want to calm down. Oh, thank you, Tom. That's very sweet of you. But no, do you know what I mean? I just, I think sometimes it's right. It's really important. It's like, it's absolutely right that just quickly, Israel were fucking hurt and angry and had a moment. And, but it's all right for everyone to have a moment as long as then you kind of then get back to the negotiating table. That's all. Um, uh, there was another funny piece here about the do's and don'ts of uh, dining on a first date. What should you and shouldn't you eat on a first date? Come on, give us your thoughts and then we'll get on to the Friday quiz. What should... Oysters. This, this is funny. This, I actually read into this. I thought this was about the kind of food, but this was about a guy who went on a date and I think he said he was going to pay. And then she ordered just plate after plate after plate of oysters. And so he went to the toilet and he didn't come back. And so she was landed with the, I think, something like a £180 bill. I mean, how apocryphal that is, I, I don't rightly know. But are there certain spaghetti bolognese, Grace Ann Martin? It's a difficult one to eat sexily, isn't it? It's a difficult one to eat without, you know, it's that moment where you suck it in and it's, it's this bit, isn't it? Where it goes slap and then a bit of meat lands just there, isn't it? A little bit of bol. I mean, if spag is the pasta, then I presume the, the meat bit is the bol. Spag bol. It's all... Ooh. The worst is if... Steak and chip, have steak and chips, are you saying? See, I don't think steak is a nice... I know steak's seen as a romantic meal, isn't it? Lady in the Tramp made it romantic because they ended up snogging or kissing off the back of a meatball. I've done that once. Um, do you know what I mean? Slurpy food. S uh, um, soup, difficult. But if you, I think if you were on a date and you ordered... I mean, I, I'm, this is hugely sexist. I'm inheriting toxic masculinity. But if I was on a date and I'd ordered... I, order, I couldn't order soup, because I think they think, you fucking like your soup? S soup? Yeah, okay. But spag bowl, tricky, let's say. Fish, bit fishy. Oysters, just a bit show off. I think if you order oysters as a bloke, you're just trying to say to you something that you're probably not. You're trying to go, look at me, I can eat an oyster. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but you're like, I can eat an oyster. now. Uh, people who follow our travel vlogs will know that I can't eat oysters anymore because every time I've had one, <laughs> I've been terribly ill. Um, we're going to get to the Beatles song, Reese. Um, garlic is okay if both of you have it. Unless you have garlic, you're on a date you don't want to be on, you have garlic because you want to repel because he feels, that he looks vampiric and you're like, I'm going to keep you away from me, matey flip. What was the one I was saying? You don't want something too hard. I'll tell you something that's always a bit... Not that I've done this, because this kind of bread wasn't around when I was dating. But you know when you get that sort of sourdough bread? You ask for bread and butter, and then you get a bit of bread. I, was, I think I took Fleur out for dinner one night, and that's, it's, it's like a daddy-daughter date, you know, where you sit down and catch up. And they brought this bread, and I buttered it, and I thought, this is hard, the bread and the butter. And I thought, I went to bite it, and I was, she was telling me something. As I looked at her, I bit into it, and my, literally, I nearly broke all my teeth. And it's very hard to kind of style that out. She laughed, I laughed, and I like kind of agonised. And I cut my lip. It was that hard. And I, health and safety. I said, can you, I need to sign a risk assessment just to eat the sourdough bread. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes it, and you could do yourself a huge dental injury if you're wanting to look hard as a man, you know, like a man-man, and you just keep biting into that cement-like sourdough crust and destroy your teeth. But what would you do? So say you're sat there on a date, you bite into your sourdough, your tooth falls out. What do you do? Do you, do you run? Do you pick up the tooth and go, shit, just put that in my pocket? Or do you say, easy access for French kissing? Don't eat anything dry like pork, struggling to... Chewing meat for days. You can shred the butter with your fork. Or what I sometimes do, Joni, is pop the butter right near a candle. Or I sit on it. I tend to find if I put it under the cushion I'm sitting on, it really melts it quickly. Have you seen that on TikTok? Yeah, I think if my tooth, because I have a crown, so if my tooth fell out on a date, I think I'd probably pull it out, pop it in my pocket, go, sort it. I can whistle, I can whistle Dixie now. Hey. Yeah. What you eat is it's, it's tricky, isn't it? Oh, look, I've just seen a, there's a photograph somewhere of Britain's loneliest sheep stranded at the bottom of the hill. I'll find that photo and I'll pop it on the uh, community tab. 
Okay, so there's that. And then quickly, just before we go to the quiz, the Beatles are going to release an emotional uh, final song. This is a, a recording that, that George Harrison apparently once thought was so shit. I, I quite like that, you know, George Harrison went, hey, this is fucking shit, even though John Lennon had died and it was an old recording and they tried to, oh, maybe he was alive when he, he said, this is bad. It was his voice on a tape or something. He's like, shit, I love that, it's shit. Anyway. Peter Jackson, director of Lord of the Rings, he obviously made that sort of archival documentary about the Beatles. He's managed to use AI tech to strip back John Lennon's voice, I believe, and John Lennon's guitar playing so that they... And now we're going to have a new single. There's literally going to be a new Beatles song that has, was there. The bits, the constituent bits were out there, but they've all now been brought together under one nice sort of arching roof called a Beatles song. Um, so, yes. Yeah. So how do you feel about that? How do you feel about that? Would you, do you is that, will you, if you bought that, would you buy that thinking, yeah, this is a new Beatles single? Or would you just think, nah, this is like a demo tape just souped up? Anyway, Paul McCartney's very excited. He said it was very emotional. I think it's great yelling down. You know what? I read the story and I thought, God, if I was a Beatles fan, I'd love this. But I'm not, so. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Spread your golden wings and take to flight. Black, blackbird, they're golden. Da, 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 Cause you're gonna give me a big fright. Blackbirds fly. I love that bit. I don't know what they say, but I love it. I just love it. <laughs> it's great. My mum likes that. Me and my mum sing that together. I think we're gonna release a duet. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Rolling Stones or Beatles, Reese Roberts asks. I want to know the answer. It's a good one. I think it's a good one. It's a good one. I, I, I would always say Rolling Stones because they seem a bit more whacked out and fucking jagged. Jagger. Um, but then, yeah, no, I, I, prefer, I prefer the Rolling Stones. There's a sort of, there's a kind of noisier edge to them, isn't it? Whereas the Beatles, it's a bit too clean. Stones. Oh, look, vast majority here is stones. Okay, whilst you're all answering that, I'm going to pull up Quiz of the Week. You ready? I'm not going to do the double screen because we're not on StreamYard, so I'm going to keep you up there and we're going to do this. You ready? Ready, ready, ready? Okay, here we go. Question one. Hollywood stars were, this was Halloween this weekend. Hollywood stars were warned that dressing as characters from major shows and movies this Halloween could break the rules of the actor's strike which means no Barbie, no Captain America, and no Wednesday Adams. But which of these characters would be okay for actors to dress as? Which of these would be okay? A, Beetlejuice, B, Dracula, or C, a zombie? You know what, Julie? I always thought I hated Dire Straits because I always associated them with someone I didn't get on with when I was a teenager, an adult in my life. And I've subsequently come to think, actually, I really like their music. Lots of you saying C. So obviously this is tied into the idea that actors are on strike, couldn't inhabit the costumes of characters that belonged to the studios for whom they were striking against. Lots of you saying Dracula, you're, uh, you're wrong. It's not Dracula, it's a zombie. Because a zombie is a thing. I don't know if you knew that. Zombies exist. The other two don't. Uh, question two, the world of football paid tribute to Sir Bobby Charlton. Against which side did Bobby Charlton make his first team debut for Manchester United back in 1956? Was it A, Aston Villa, B, Charlton Athletic, or C, Preston North End? I love seeing the names of football clubs. What's your all answer? A, B, or C? A, Aston Villa, B, Charlton Athletic, C, Preston North End. I love, you know why? I used to play Sabutio on my own. Impossible, sad, granted, but I did. And I used to have like a chart where you used to have these kind of you put the square stickers of the football clubs. I memorised the colours virtually of every single football club. So I'm now going to tell you what I think the colours are of these teams. Aston Villa, purple and grey. Or sort of grey-blue, purple and grey-blue. Charn Athletic, red and white. Preston North End, white and dark blue. Am I right? Priest Roberts says Charn Athletic. Good Trip Lollipop does too. Charn Faith, you're right. It's B. Question three. My God, this is a long question with a lot of long letters in it. Tens of thousands of women in Iceland, including the Prime Minister, refused to work on Tuesday and protest at the gender pay gap and gender-based violence. Iceland has been ranked as best in the world for gender equality. But which of these nations is not in the current top 10 for gender equality? A, Belgium, B, Nicaragua, or C, 
the United Kingdom. Which of those three countries is not in the top 10 for, uh, in terms of the best for gender equality? Is it A, Belgium, B, Nicaragua, or C, the United Kingdom? Down the hatch, sunny, sunny, sunny chum. You're going to see, it's the United Kingdom, you're absolutely right. Yeah, we're behind Nicaragua. Oh, that's no insult to Nicaragua, but you would, you would hope and think that you might, you know. Question um, four. Donald Trump's civil fraud trial in New York had a dramatic day as the former president found himself face to face with his former lawyer, Michael Cohen. Trump's failed plan to buy which NFL team took center stage? So Trump tried to buy but failed which of these? A, the Buffalo Bills. B, the Miami Dolphins, or C, the New York Giants? I went for the, what I consider to be the more obvious answer, uh, and then I went for the second more obvious answer, and I got them both wrong. Bit of a clue in there. Joni says C, New York Giants. Laura Grace Ann Martin says A, Buffalo Bills. Um, Jenny J says it's, it's, it's A, the Buffalo Bills. Question five. London Transport Museum opened again. Too fell out. The London Transport Museum opened a gallery that showcases the best of the city's original artwork dating back more than a century. London Underground's first pictorial poster is one on display, but what's it called? What's this poster called? A. Keeps London going. B. No need to ask a policeman. Or C. There is still a country. As in, I guess, the countryside, you know, to travel out of. Which of those? Is, the, is this uh, first pictorial underground poster called? Is it A, keeps London going? Bye, Cambo, thanks for joining. Yeah, I hope you enjoy the mad ride. B, no need to ask a policeman. Or C, there is still the country. Sandra Beveridge says A, it's B, no need to ask a policeman. Question six, we're nearly there. Jockey Frankie Dottori wrapped up a 37 year career in British horse racing with a win on King of Steel. Oh, horse racing. What was the name of the horse with whom he won another race on the same day at Ascot? Was it A, Free Wind, B, Kin Ross, or C, Trawler Man? Jockey Frankie Dottori wrapped up a 37-year career, 37 career in British horse racing with a win on King of Steel. But what was the name of the horse with whom he won another race on the same day? Was it, oh, did I not give you the answer to the last one? What did I say the answer to the, what was the question to the lot? What was the last question again? Uh, oh God, I've forgotten. What was the last question? Someone remind me what the last question is and I'll remind you what the answer was. Did I not give you the answer? Um, uh, oh, the Buffalo Broncos. That's it, Buffaloes. It was, yeah, I did say yeah, Buffaloes. Okay, uh, A, Free Wind, B, Kin Ross, or C, Trawler Man. It's Margaret O'Brien is right, it's C, Trawler Man. Question seven, final one. Hope you've done well, hope you've got six. I think some of you might have six today. I'm hoping someone will get a seven. I hope someone's gonna be a winner. Amazon revealed it was trialing humanoid robots which can handle items in a similar fashion to a human in its warehouse. Warehouse? Warehouse. Wow, so they've now literally got robot humans. Because let's face it, all the humans want to work reason, more reasonable hours. Um, what are these robots called that Amazon are creating that can do the job of a human, like a human, as if they are a human? Is it A, B-O-B, -B, Bob? Is it B, uh, Digit? Or is it C, Proteus. What are they called? A, Bob, B, Digit, or C, Proteus. Come on, guys, come on. Come on, guys, come on. Come on, guys, come on. Um, oh, have I lost you again? Have I lost you again? I think I've lost you again. Have I lost you again? Oh, no, 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 no. Five and six answers. No, I haven't lost you. Okay, good. There's just something going on with my computer in there. Uh, it's the answer to that one is, oh, what was it? B. God, I've screwed this up. Hang on a minute. Because of the, uh, 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 ah, no, it's gone. Um, uh, let me just jump over here. Sarah Witherington 2. I said Proteus, didn't I? They're called Proteus. Proteus. It's frightening, isn't it? Who got six? Someone got six. Did I see three? Good ship lollipop. Uh, did anyone get seven? Three out of seven, Julie Hilton. Sarah Fox, four. Not too shabby. Joni, that's respectful. Julie, one. Sandra Beveridge, five. Very good. 
Uh, Margaret O'Brien won. Okay, could do better, but you didn't do the worst. Five out of seven for Grace and Raspberry. Mr. Cardinal, five. Um, Fifi Cromack, two. Edward Bevington, eh, yeah, maybe terrible for Reese, four. Wow. Um, missed, oh, you missed five and six uh, answers. They are there. I think they are there, Faith. Sorry. Um, I, th I think I did answer them. I, I went back. The Trump one was Buffalo and the... Uh, I can't remember what, let me just quickly, do you want me to quickly run through for you? Because I know, yeah, so zombie, uh, the answer to the second one was Charlton Athletic, B, the answer to the third one was the United Kingdom, C, the answer to the fourth one was the Buffalo Bills, A, the answer to the next one was, oh, no need to ask a policeman, well done, yeah, you're right, uh, B, that was the answer to question five, question six, it was, Trawler Man, C, you're absolutely right. And question seven was, uh, no, it's Digit. Oh my God, I got it wrong. Sorry, the answer was B, Digit. I've screwed up all your scores. I've made a right pig zero this one, sorry. I think some of you got five or six. Oh, sorry, it's gremlins in the machine. Obviously, even not even mainstream media was upset with that, that rant earlier. Anyway, guys, look, have a lovely day. Um, you will be seeing the uh, a, a vlog and... Um, there's a Curly Cooks tomorrow and there'll be the papers and I'm not too sure what's happening on Sunday because I'm filming, but I think Nadia and Dina might be surprising all you members with something. That'll be nice, wouldn't it? Guys, have a lovely...